All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So it's time for another flashback. And in this specific flashback, I just want to talk about the early and traumatizing experience of learning how to drive with my parents, all right? By the way, let this serve as a lesson. Anybody who's teaching anybody how to drive, everything I talk about in this story, these are the things that you don't do when teaching someone how to drive, all right? So take note, get your pencil and paper ready. Um, so here's the backstory. I'm originally from Spanaway, Washington, which is like this small military town. It's like a suburb of Tacoma, Washington. If you not familiar with Washington State. Tacoma, Washington is like a diet version of Seattle that's like 30 minutes from Seattle. And then Spanaway was like 15 minutes from Tacoma. And so in Spanaway, you needed a car to get around. Um, there wasn't really a public transit system that really maneuvered that well in the town because it went on one side of town but not the part I lived on. So you couldn't catch the city bus anywhere from where I was at for the longest. Um, then on top of that, the, um, there wasn't like cabs or anything you could take, there wasn't a subway, so you needed to have a car. Like the bus only went to like four parts of Spanaway, and if you weren't in one of those four parts, you were just out of luck. And so I was super involved in school. At this point, I'm in high school, it's like 2004, 2005, and I'm super involved in school. You know, I'm on the track team, I'm in student government, I'm doing theater and the dance and all that stuff like that, and so I'm always needing rides everywhere. And I didn't have the fun parents that some people talk about that, you know, the parents took them everywhere and the parents were super involved. No, my parents used to use their job as a reason for why they weren't about to do something. I work, I'm not about to take you, I got to work, I got to work. Okay, mind you, they worked a 9 to 5 like everybody else, but, but somehow that 9 to 5 turned into I work 23 hours a day, I just don't have the energy and time to be taking you nowhere. And then I didn't even have the kind of parents where some people used to be like, you know, my mom would be like, you either need to find a way there or find a way back, but I'm not doing both. I didn't even get that option. It was find a way there and find a way back or you're not going. And so, um, one day I'm, I think I'm doing the kitchen or something, and I hear this loud <laughs> sound. I'm like, what is going on? I look, I see this car struggling to pull into the driveway. I'm like, what, what's going on? And my dad calls me outside, Michael, bring your butt downstairs. Get out here right now, I need to show you something. Okay, I'm coming. I go downstairs, my dad's like, this is your new car. I'm, oh, okay, all right. And so I'm trying to be like humble and appreciative because Okay, I'm, at this point I'm still 15. I don't, I'm not even old enough to drive it. Like in Washington State, when you turn 15, you get your permit and then you can take, either 15 or 15 and a half, I can't remember. But you get your permit at either 15 or 15 and a half. And then when you turn 16, you can get the license. So at this point, I'm like a new 15. Just turned 15 not too long ago. And so I'm looking like, dang, man, this is cool. But I'm looking at this car and I'm like, man, let me tell you about this car. So it was a 1989 Ford Festiva. All right, not to be confused with Ford Fiesta, but a Ford Festiva, which is a car that looks even worse. And so I'm not trying to be like a spoiled little snob, but at the time when I looked at the car, I was like, you, you gotta be kidding me. Like this car, everything that could be wrong with that car was wrong with the car. First of all, my dad bought it for $300 from the neighbor down the street, which should have been strike one to tell you the car wasn't worth anything as far as it being dependable. And so the car, on the right side, on the front half of the body, like on the hood, all that was all jacked up because it got in an accident with like the school bus where I think the bus was taking like a left turn and didn't clear it all the way so it, it hit into the right of the car and so the whole right side is all jacked up and everything like that. And then the car had no muffler, the muffler had rusted off and everything like that. And then on top of that, um, there was no way to listen to music. The cassette, it had a cassette player or a tape player. And so the tape player worked, but the issue with the tape player was it was broken. You couldn't take the tape out. So the tape that was in there was all we could listen to. And so the tape that was in there when we bought the car was Keith Sweat's Keep It Coming out. And little Keep It Coming. Girl. So that was all you could listen to. And I mean, it was cool the first five times, but then you couldn't even take the tape out to flip it over to hear the other half of the album. So you could only hear the first five or six songs on the album. So then you had that issue. And then the right door, because it got an accident with the bus, the door couldn't close all the way. And because the door couldn't close all the way, like it would close, but you know, it, it wouldn't make that cuckoo sound when you close it. And so it would always be somewhat cracked, which meant the car light would stay on. But the car light up top didn't have the switch that you could turn it on and off. It operated with the door. So what we would have to do is, every time we wanted to use the car, you had to either give it a jump or you had to charge the battery beforehand in order to drive the car. And then on top of that, the weather strip on the left side didn't work too well. So when it rained, and we are in Washington State, all right, the whole left side of the car would just have like this mildew smell. Like the car just went through a lot of struggle. Like, and you could tell that car was from the 80s. It just was the face of Reaganomics, like real talk. And so, I'm already being a little bougie, like, dang, man, I, want, I wish I had, like, at least a nicer car. You know, some of my friends, none of us are rich, but, you know, some of them got, like, a Honda Civic and a, and a, and a Honda Sonata and all. You know, when you're thinking like a 15-year-old, you're, you're just so unappreciative of anything. And so, I'm grateful for the car, but I'm annoyed, but I'm also excited to drive, so it's like, it is what it is. 
And so my thing about my parents and driving, they take it so serious. Like my mom is already paranoid and my father is like, he makes it like a mission. And so what they were trying to do was make me really appreciate the art and the privilege of driving. So they put me through the, the, the worst boot camp that lasted for like two years before I was able to drive. And so what we first initially started doing was he would make me get in this Ford Fiesta, Fiesta car. We would get in the car. Now mind you, I didn't get to drive. I just had to sit in the passenger side. And so we would drive and he would give these long lectures about how driving was serious and you're driving this two-ton thing and you can end somebody's life and insurance if you get in a car accident, it's just going to ruin your life and blah, 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 just doing all this. Mind you, I could never even hear the lecture because like I said, the muffler had rusted off. So the car is just... And you just see him in the car. I'm like, okay, so the car's loud. And I would be so embarrassed because when he would do these talks and these rides, the car couldn't really go a whole lot of places. Like, it couldn't really do hills. And Washington State is nothing but hills because it's nothing but mountains over there and faults. And so, like, the car, oh, I, I remember one time, like, the car couldn't really do hills. And you couldn't have more than two people in the car if you wanted to get up the hill. And we lived on two hills. You had to get up two hills to get to the house. And one time we had this, um, there was like this really bad winter storm. We had like a few feet of snow. And so all four of us were in the car. Me, my brother, my mother, my father. And we were just coming back from some restaurant. My dad was trying to gun this car up the hill. The car just, you know, it's making all this noise. <laughs> Struggling. Next thing you know, we start sliding back. My mom opens the car, jumps out the car, leaves us. I'm like, wait, so you're just going to leave us in the car to die? And mind you, my dad was able to gun it and we still got up the hill. And so now while we're going up the hill, my mom would not get back in the car. So she walked up both hills and like three blocks to get to the house. Then all of us had to get cussed out when we got home because, you know, she's been walking in, a, you know, a few feet of snow. My mom is like five feet tall, so a few feet of snow is like going all the way up her leg. And so, you know, all of us getting cussed out because now she got frost, you know, her feet hurting, feet cold, everything. It's everything is my, our fault. Everything is my fault. And so, anyway, the car can not get up the hill. So we could only do like the residential areas, which meant we were only going to ride around the neighborhoods where all my friends live. And so, <laughs> We'd be riding in this loud car that sounds like a helicopter. I'm like, man. And you just, I'd just be so embarrassed. Like, I didn't want nobody to sit me in the car. And then because the muffler had rusted, it was just like all this thick smoke would go out the back. Fortunately, it wasn't coming inside the car and killing us. But, like, it was just, the car was just very, there would be no way to sneak around with this car. I could never sneak in and break curfew because the whole neighborhood would hear me coming. You know, if I ever wanted to rob a bank or some crap like that, by the time they gave a description of that car, there's, there's no way you would miss me with that car. Like, man. So, he would give these long lectures in the car, and I couldn't even hear half the lecture because the muffler was so loud. And then you'd be embarrassed. And then, don't let them have the music on, too. So, we, we keep sweating it out with this car with the bad muffler. And so, fortunately, because God is able, the car just one day just stopped working. Just there, there was no more jumps that could make that car work. Even after my dad bought a new battery, the car was just like, look, I'm done. All right, I survived the 80s. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. And so the car just... The neighbor buys the car back for $150 because he wants to keep the body parts. I'm like, what kind of mess is going on? And so a few weeks later, my parents pull up with another car. But this time it's, a, it's another ball game. They pull up with like a 2004... Kia Spectra. I was like, oh, okay, we are in business. And it was so funny because before then I was talking all this trash about like, man, I wouldn't want no Kia. Those are like killed in action cars. Nobody wants that crap. And as soon as my parents pulled up one of them things, I was so happy because I was like, thank God, anything but that Ford Festiva thing. Like, and the lady that used to be at like my um, Sunday school teacher, she used to always cook me because the pastor's daughter at the church I went to, she had a Ford Fiesta. And the lady used to be like, oh, well, you and so-and-so, y'all can just race your two cars all down the street, huh? I'm like, okay, you got jokes. Anyway, so I was hope so happy I had this car. And mind you, at the same time, I, was, I had started driving school. And mind you, my driving school sucked, okay? As a matter of fact, they got shut down. It was called Diamond Driving Academy or Di Diamond Driving School, some crap like that in Spanway. They shut the crap down because it wasn't really legit. Like, you just sit in there, watch videos, you did your four drives. Two of my drives, my instructor, this lady named Shannon, she had to stop at her house twice so she could pick up some food or something and take it to another person's house down the street. I'm like, okay, awesome. And so I wasn't getting a whole lot of experience driving. And so one day, my dad's like, okay, it's time. We're going to take you to drive. Come on, get in the car. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm thinking it's just going to be me and my dad. And now, you know, I'll be able to hear the conversations. Only I'm going to be in the driver's seat. The muffler is not going to be loud. And it's a newer car. It's like a brand new car, like right off the lot. They, there was like a seller or something. My parents just went and bought it. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to be able to just drive. It's going to be lit. Nope. Whole family has to go. Because one thing our family does is 
Like when my father was still alive, we did everything as a family. Oh, it, it, it was, it's great like to look back on, but as a teenager, I couldn't stand it. Like if we went to the mall, we went to all the stores together as a family. It used to be so embarrassing. You know, you have your other friends who were allowed to do stuff that they wanted to do, and they'd be kicking it, and then you're in the mall with your parents, you know, and your dad, get on and try these socks on. Okay. And so, the whole family got to get a car. Now let me give you the dynamics of the family that's about to get this car. Mind you, you kind of already have my father. My father was like ex-military, super militant, super serious, super stern, all about his business. He don't take no mess, all right? And he will tell you all about yourself and cuss you out at the same time without using cuss words because for some reason, neither of my parents ever really cuss. Actually, I, I didn't hear my mother even use the B word until last year. Never hear my parents cuss. They don't cuss. And so, um, my dad's, you know, super serious. He's sitting in the passenger side. Behind me is my brother. My brother at this point, I think is eight or nine. I was like 15. My brother already knows that this is about to be a disaster. So he's just cackling down. Everything is funny to him. <laughs> just dying because he knows that it's about to go down in his car. And then there's my mother. And my mother is, she's a very wonderful person, but she has a very old soul. She's like an old lady to me sometimes. And when it comes to driving, she's super, super paranoid. She got like a really bad car accident when she was a little girl. She never quite got over it. So driving with her was never enjoyable. As a matter of fact, she was not a fan of me starting this whole driving experience. She was not having it. And so she used to find every reason why I couldn't drive up until that time. Or even after I got my license and everything, because the story gets further. Like, she would always find a reason why I shouldn't be driving. So like, if I would get in trouble, somehow it would all relate back to why I wasn't going to be driving. So like, don't let it be a day when you forgot to like, take the meat out to thaw for dinner. You know, did you take the meat out for dinner? Oh no, mama, I forgot. See, that's what I'm talking about. You talking about you, and you want to drive, but you can't be responsible. What are we supposed to eat? Okay, dang. Or whatever. Don't let it be something like, oh, you didn't cut the, oh, you didn't cut the grass? See, that's what I'm talking about. And you want to drive. Oh. Okay, like she, that was just her go-to line for everything. It wouldn't have to do with anything, but she was going to find a way to bring it back to driving. I remember one time, it was something as simple like, I think I had my music on too loud downstairs. You got this loud music on, see, and you want to drive. You're going to be driving that car, the music's going to be too loud, and you're going to get T-boned by the fire truck because you're not going to see it coming because you need to be able to hear when you're driving, Michael. That's why you're not going to drive. And then, like, when she would drive, you had to help out if you were in the car with her. I used to hate that too. Like, if she would back out, everybody had to look and help. And if you weren't helping, oh, you were a part of the problem. You, am I clear on the left? Yes, ma. Am I clear on the right? Mind you, we in Spanish. We ain't no traffic. It's like 10 cars on the whole, in the whole city. See, you're not helping. That's why you're not going to drive. And you want to drive. Like, oh, okay, man. So my mom is in the seat um, behind. Hold on. My father's in the passenger seat. My brother's in the seat behind me. My mother's in the seat behind my father. And so all four of us in the car. I'm already annoyed because it's a whole family thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to put the music on and my, you know, and, and we're going to make this whole thing go. And so my um, mom, no, my dad was like, you don't need no music. You don't need to put no music on. And my mom, that's why right. He don't even need no music. Because my mom was about to sit here and echo everything my father said. Because she really did not want us to drive. And the only reason she got in the car was because she wanted to be the I told you so person. And she, I don't think she trusted me behind the wheel, so she, for some reason, she felt that if she was in the car, it would make things better. I'm like, okay, well, if I had wrecked the car, we all broke up then, huh? So anyway, um, we're in the car, and we're arguing about the music, and I'm trying to explain to them, like, listen, music keeps me calm. And I'm like, Miss Shannon at the drive school said, you need to do something that keeps you calm so that you're relaxed while you're driving. I was like, I'm already a little stressed out because the whole family's in the car. Then my mom, well, if this is stressing you out because there's people in the car, you don't need to drive at all. I'm like, dang, I just can't do nothing. And so somehow my dad caves and he's like, you know what, fine, put the music on, just don't have it loud. And mind you, this was progress because this wasn't the Ford Festiva. I could put real CDs in, okay, no Keith Sweat today. And like, I used to have all these little, um, Mix CDs I used to make when I used to still use Bear Share and Kazaa and LimeWire and all that. And so I think I had like mix number 43 in the car jamming. Had to turn it all the way down though. Like just enough to barely concentrate. And so my mom was pissed off because she's like, he didn't need no music. And so we first started driving. And you know, we just move. We're, mind you, we're only doing like little residential around the neighborhood stuff. We're driving. My mom is pissed with me because she's mad about the music. Because she's like, well, if you don't like music, you need to be gospel. And I'm like, oh, I don't got no gospel music, mom. I'm sorry. My mom's a minister, by the way, so she don't want to hear nothing secular. Like, nah, it need to be gospel. And I'm like, nah, yeah. And so the only thing I had in the car at the time, I had Life Jennings um, stuff on one of my little mixes. And he has a song in his first album talking about, like, hypocritical church people. So for some reason, I was trying to be a smart aleck, and I put that on. So while I'm driving, you know how it's like when you can tell somebody's looking at you? 
but you don't want to look back at them because you know you're going to get told about yourself. And so I can feel my mother looking at me in the rearview mirror. And so I'm just trying to drive. Life Jennings is singing his whatever he's singing about. Man, I just happened to do one quick peek up to that mirror. My mom looking the whole time. I was like, shoot. Okay, so I just put on the radio. We listen to 98.9 Smooth Jazz, which is no longer a station for some reason. We're riding in this car. Now, mind you, everybody in the car, it, it, it's straight chaos. My brother's over here laughing because, for one, I'm paranoid with every car that's oncoming. Every time there's a car that's on the other lane, because we're on a two-lane road. And so it's me and then the opposing traffic. Every time an oncoming car is coming, I kind of swerve the other way because I kept thinking they were going to hit me. And so we keep doing this. And my dad, if you swerve one more time, stop swerving the car. So my brother's laughing. My mom's in the back. I told you he's not ready to drive. He don't need to be driving right now. My dad, can't just shut up. He'll be all right. And I'm like, okay. Mind you, my parents love each other. They have a very, they had a wonderful marriage. It's just the arguments they had would be the most hilarious crap because they would just go for blood. And so my mom's in the back. Plus, I told him he ain't ready to drive. He got the music too loud. He's swerving. We got the band attached and everything. And so we're swerving. I do one last swerve, whew, or whatever. Only this time, there's a pothole on the side of the street. Because mind you, Spadaway is so small town, there's not even sidewalks on a lot of the roads. And so, what happens is, I hit the tire on like the side of the pothole. My dad gets annoyed, and he's like, you know, pull over so I can hit you. Just pull over so I can hit you. And my mom's like, no, we're not pulling over. He don't even know how to do that. You wanted him to drive, he's just going to keep driving. I was like, oh, okay. And my brother's still just dying. And I'm annoyed, like, why is this a family event? I... <clears throat> Give me the strength. And so we're driving. My dad has me drive up to my old middle school because there's like a big parking lot there. And he's like, okay, you're going to parallel park now. And here's the thing about parallel parking. One, I had never done it before, but for some reason my father felt like because I was going to this drive school, like somehow I knew how to drive already because I sat in, in a class and watched a few videos. Like I was just supposed to magically know how to parallel park. And so on top of that, like in that part of town we lived in, there was never a reason to parallel park. My parents never had to do it because one, Washington State has parking. You know what I mean? Like there's parking, there's parking lots, you know, there's parking garages. It's not like driving in DC where you'd be driving all around town for 10 hours trying to find a street parking. That doesn't really happen, at least in that part of town I lived in. Maybe if you lived in like downtown Seattle, that, you know, could be an experience. But for Spanaway, you had no reason to parallel park. And so my dad randomly whatchamacallit, was like, okay, this is what you're going to do. Because we're at my old middle school at this point, this big parking lot. And he's like, you're going to park in between them two grills. And what he was talking about is, on the ground, you know, there's the two, like, sewer grills where the water drains. And so, first of all, normally, like, when you're doing that at a drive school, they give you, like, some tall cones or something so you can see the cones. And so, I couldn't see the grills because they were, they, you know, they were on the same level as the street. And then they were black, so they matched the tar on the street or the and everything like that, so you couldn't really make out what's going on. And my dad was like, okay, you're gonna park between them two grills, and when I say boom, that means you hit something. Mind you, there was nothing there, but so boom just meant you were either hitting an imaginary car, or you were hitting something, or I was hitting the curve, because it was kind of along the lines of the curve, too. And so he's like, now go. And I'm like, go where? He's like, park. I'm like, I don't know how. You, you, See, I told you, I told you, he didn't want to drive. He don't even know how to do it. I'm like, well, you don't shut up. And so, um, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to just do something. So I just start moving the wheel, moving next to you know, here. Boom! Okay, let me go to the other. Boom! Oh, okay. Then I, I put the car like in reverse. Boom! Okay, back and drive. Boom! I, and I'm like, what? And I didn't know what I was doing. First of all, we were already on the wrong spot. Like, the car was sitting over the grill. So I didn't know that I was sitting on top of the imaginary car. And so he was going to just keep booming me until I figured out that we were on top of the grill. Because I'm like... I didn't know to use the mirrors, the side mirrors to look down for the grills. Cause okay, I'm like, I've been in driving class for like one week and we ain't got to that part yet. So I ain't heard of none of this stuff. And, and mind you, I can't even see the grills with the mirror that good anyway. Like, and so we're going and I, every time I do something, it's boom, boom, Michael. And like, the more he's doing it, the more agitated he's getting. I'm like, he's this man about to pop me upside the head in a minute. My brother, still in the backseat. <laughs> and my mom's in the back popping him, telling him to shut up and everything. And so, I'm still going, boom! After about like the 18th boom, my dad's like, you fuck, boom! So he boomed upside my head, and I'm like, what? What am I getting hit for? And then she, don't be hitting while he's driving, because he might hit the gas and run into the fence. And the girl just jump, he ain't about to hit no fence. I told you, he's not ready to drive. I told you, he don't need to be driving yet. And then my brother's still laughing. I'm just in the car like, what is going on? And so, I say, everybody, okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. And so, I take the car, I try to spin all the way out of the spot and try to come back around and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this now. 
And I'm already going wrong because I'm trying to pull into in parallel park. I, I'm not realizing you need to back into in parallel. I'm trying to pull in. So there's some more booms. Eventually, my dad was like, you know what? Just forget it, Michael. Turn the car around. Turn the car around. We're going home. I'm like, okay, dang. And my mom, mm -hmm, I told you, he wasn't ready. He was not ready. See? Always think he want to be grown. Want to do everything. Think he know everything. And he want to drive. Can't even parallel park. Talking all kind of trash. And I'm looking at her. So so I was, I'm like, okay, that's okay, because you know what, when we go somewhere tomorrow and you need some help backing out, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to act like I'm asleep. So figure it out yourself. Have fun with that. And, um, and so we're driving, and for some reason, it sounds like we're driving on rocks, like the whole way there. And mind you, this, my middle school was like down the street from the house. We weren't even, we were less than like a mile from the house. It sounds like we're driving on rocks, but we're also on like these little county roads. So I'm like, okay, well, there's gravel and stuff on the street. But it sounded like we were driving in a parking lot full of like rocks, and he's just... On speed drive, we get to the house. Mind you, I almost freaking crashed into the car in the driveway. Mind you, my mom had just bought, um, I think she had a Lexus at the time or something like that. And then my dad had he purposely put his truck on the other side of the block because he assumed I would tear up the truck or something. And so I parked super, super close to the, the my mom's car, like this close, like the mirrors. We can't even get out on the left side. And so I had to back it up and try to straighten out the parking. My dad was like, ah, oh, don't. I'm like, okay, so now instead of me just backing the car up and trying to park back in so we can get out, he decides, he tells me, put the car in park, put the parking brake on, and then he tells me to try to climb over to that side, and he's going to climb over me while we're trying to straighten the car, because he didn't trust me to back the car. He just knew if I did it, I was going yeah, all over my mom's car. So the two of us are trying to switch seats. Now let me explain something. At the time, I was probably like 5'3", maybe 110 pounds or some crap like that. My dad was 6'1". 270, 280 pounds in this little key spectrum. And so we try to squeeze and climb over and all this other stuff that we're trying to do and everything. And he's cussing me out at the same time. My mom's mad because my dad didn't push the seat back all onto her legs. Mind you, she's five feet tall, so she had legs when she was just being dramatic. My brother is still dying. Like my brother, this had to be the best day of his life. Everything was so funny to him that day. And I when I tell you I wanted to beat him up when we got home, oh I wanted to get him because I was like, you look lame, what you get on my nerves. And so we switch seats. My dad, you know, fixes the car, realigns the car in the driveway. We get out. And then we're walking. And then we're going in the house. My mom's like, oh! And I'm like, what? My mom, Michael, because my, my name is Michael and so is my father. Michael, and she's talking to my dad, I think this tire on this side is flat. I was like, oh, God. And I'm looking at her like, oh, shut up, please just shut up. Because I was, I just wanted to make it in the house at this point. Because I was so done with driving. At that point, I was like, I never want to drive again. F everybody. I just want to go home. Just let me go to my room. And my mom, nope. Uh -uh, this car looked like it got a flat tire. And really, it did. Like, it was the right front tire on the passenger side. Basically, what happened, if you remember when I was talking about swerving, when we hit that pothole, we hit, like, there was some kind of, there wasn't a sidewalk, so the street got, just kind of ended. And it was like rocks and then like the street or the pavement, but it was all like cut up and stuff. And so I think the pavement must have slipped the tire. And so it was just a little bit of air coming in at a, out of, at a time. So we still had time to go and do the whole parallel parking escapade and everything like that. But by the time we got to the house after, you know, another 10 or 15 minutes had passed, um, the air was finally starting to let out. And we looked at that tire. The tire was straight flat. And we had been driving on it so long, even the rim was all jacked. The rim wasn't even a, a it wasn't circular anymore. It was like a square. I was like, oh my god. The way my father let me have it that day, he was so, oh, I, he was so mad. Like he went, oh, dude, I can't believe I just bought this car, just got this car last week. You done already tore it up. You ain't ever driving again. And so my mom had already went in the house at this point, and she's in a good mood. You know, I'm going on upstairs to cook. I told y'all he wasn't ready to drive. I told y'all. Y'all just listen to me. I'm just, you know, da 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 da. And so she's doing whatever she's doing. My brother, this was the best day of his life. I mean, he's standing outside the car just looking, ooh, yeah, dad, you look really bad. And I was like, Marcus, if you don't shut the fuck Like, oh, I wanted to fight him. I was living like my dad. He was like, you know, I, sh I shouldn't even fix it. I should just let it be all jacked up for you behind. So I'll teach you then. And so he eventually did take it to get semi-fixed. He just fixed the tire. He didn't fix the rim, so the rim was still all looking like Jeepers Creepers. And so he just put a new tire on it. So when I was driving it at first, when I finally did get to drive the car, the car used to pull to the right like nobody's business. Like you'd be driving and you'd have to pull like the steering wheel to kind of stay straight every now and then. Like if you're doing any kind of crazy turn, when the steering wheel would go back and straighten out, you'd have to, to kind of keep things straight. It was like you were like pulling a lawnmower to keep the car straight. Eventually he went and got that fixed because he's like, okay, yeah, this is actually a serious like safety issue. 
And so, eventually, what I had to end up doing, because my parents were living, they were like, that was it. They were like, we're not teaching you how to drive, you need to figure this crap out. Um, and so, after I had passed the little driving classes session with the half accredited driving school, um, pretty much my mom had her friend try to teach me, but then her schedule didn't align with um, when I was able to do it and everything like that. And so, what I ended up doing is like when the summer came, I was like, okay, well, my parents work at 9 to 5, they won't be home until after 5. Hell, I'll just take the car and teach myself, which y'all should not do, those of you who are underage or without license, please get a license first. And so, I would take the little car, mind you, I'd have to bribe my brother, like, okay, listen, either just don't say anything, you know, I'll get you some Taco Bell, or, you know, get some McDonald's or something, just shut up, I'll bring you something back, if you just don't say anything, shut up, I'm gonna break your neck, one or the other. And so, you know, I'd have to bribe him and, and everything, because he, oh, he loved to snitch. Oh, he would snitch real quick if he knew he could get something from it back in the day. And so, you know, I'd always have to bring him something back in order for them to not say anything. And that's pretty much how I taught myself how to drive. Like, I would just hit all the little residential areas and everything like that. And I'd have my little music on. And I'd be riding. I think at the time, like, Brandy's Aphrodisiac had just come out. That, like, it was like 2004 that summer, I think, when I, um, or maybe it was 05, I can't remember. But, man, I, I, actually, Aphrodisiac was before that. But either way, I'm driving. I would have the good music on. And I, eventually, I kind of taught myself. And then, like, but when I turned 16, because I always had a late birthday. My birthday was in the summer like in August, so then, um, you know, I got my license, and for some reason, I thought, like, once I got the license, I was just gonna be able to get the car, and shoom, my parents were like, nope, absolutely not, and so I had to look at that car for, like, a year and a half, and walk past it every day to go to the bus stop, which was embarrassing, because it was like, first of all, the bus stop wasn't even close to my house to get to school in the morning, like, the bus stop was like, you had to go down the hill, go around another block, go into a totally different neighborhood and wait there. Because the thing is, when you live out in the middle of nowhere and everything is spread out, the bus stops aren't like boom, 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 boom. It's like, no, you're going to have to walk a little bit. So it was always like a 10-minute walk to the bus stop. And I would be so mad. It would be snowing outside, raining. And I'm like, can I please just drive the car on the lawn? Nope, uh -uh, I don't got you on my insurance. You're too much of a high risk for that. Absolutely not. Go on and take the bus. Well, Mama, can you at least give me a ride to the bus stop since you're going to work? Uh-uh, I ain't got to do that because you out of the way. What? There's only one way to the bus. Like, there's only one way to get there. You gotta pass the bus stop to get to work. I know, but then I gotta turn in the street to drop you off. So you just keep on going. You all right? You young? I was in the army. Okay. When I was in training, I had to do training. We had to be in the mud for three and four hours during the monsoons. Okay. And so I had to walk past that car every day for like a year and a half. I was so pissed. And man, I had to get a ride to homecoming, the dance, the games. Um, any kind of track meet if we didn't have a bus. It was, I was so pissed. Eventually I did um, get to drive. By the time I got to drive, I was like, it was like halfway through my senior year. And the argument, then they tried to switch like the argument and say, well that car wasn't for you to drive. That car is for when you get to college. That's gonna be your college car. That's why we bought it when you was 15, so it'll be paid for when you get to college. I'm like, okay. But then I decided that I wanted to go to Howard. I didn't want to stay local for school. Oh, but that car's not going to D.C. Absolutely not. Not in that city. As crazy as they drive. Nope. Nope. So pretty much, by the time I actually got to really enjoy and drive the car, it was 2010. Like, I got the car in 2004. I didn't really get to start driving it, like, seriously and going places and going here and going there until 2010, after I got out of college. All right, and by then, because it wasn't really being driven like that, then it had all these kind of problems and stuff. But you know, the car was good to me. Like I, I got rid of it. Like I think 2013, 2014. I get, I just gave the car. Just here, just take it. I gave it to my grandma, and I have a different car. But the car was good to me. It ran smooth. Once we got that tire fixed, and you know, I fixed the little curves that were wrong with it after 2010. It was a good car. But the problem was, it didn't have, it didn't have the aux cord. Man, I was still driving, trying to change CDs and, and driving, about to hit eight cars. So. But anyway, no, I, by the way, don't be fooled, I am a wonderful driver, really good driver, okay? I had a nice clean record, I mean, I got a few tickets and stuff like that, everybody do, but I mean, there's, there's no, like, accidents or nothing on my record, I ain't killed nobody. I did hit somebody at Walmart one time, but it wasn't like, I, I didn't, like, hit them, hit them. I was in the car with one of my friends from high school, we were getting lunch, some crazy person was walking sideways, so they were just walking, they looked a little deranged or something like that, and I didn't hit them with the car, but my mirror hit their elbow, and their arms went around, and I was like, oh, shoot, and my friend was like, oh my god, oh my god, and the guy looked back, all right. I was like, oh, shh. And like, I just instantly, everything had flashed back. All of the, the times of not being able to drive through. At this time, I was like a senior in high school, close to graduation. I was like, I'm not about to lose my license for this crap. I sure did hit that man and keep going. Or I didn't hit the guy. His elbow ran into my mirror. His elbow ran into my mirror, and I just kept going because I was like, if I stop, I know for sure, oh my God, I'm going to lose this car, I'm going to lose my license, I'm never going to get to drive. 
Don't think I, it, it wasn't a hit and run. If he was really hurt, I would have stopped. But he was fine. He just gave me like the finger and walked on in the store. Um, because that's the American way. Anyway, I'm out. Um, interesting flashback. I'll do a few more of these. By the way, I'm starting another series. Because a lot of people keep asking me to talk about my experience at Howard. And there's no way to do it in just one video. So I'm about to start a, a Tales from Howard series. Um, eventually. Probably this week, maybe. We'll see. Anyway, I'm out. Subscribe.